All right. Everyone get ready because today we are going deep on something kind of weird. Oh, yeah. Spam. Spam. That's right. We're talking about spam today. That's right. Stick with us, though, because we're going to uncover the surprisingly uh, rich history yes. and the cultural impact of this uh, this iconic canned meat. Yeah. And we're going to be doing this deep dive based on the YouTube video, how millions of spam cans are made in a factory canned meat factory process Sweet video. from the channel Process Powerhouse. Process Powerhouse, yeah. Um, and we're going to talk about the history, the production process, the cultural impact, and even the nutritional considerations of <laughs> spam. The nutritional considerations of spam. And I think you're going to be surprised by some of the things we learn. I was. Like, for example, did you know that over 8 billion cans of spam have been sold. Eight billion, that is. That's like three cans every second. Three cans flying off the yeah. shelves every single second. Three cans a second. Crazy. That's crazy. Okay, so let's rewind a bit. Yeah. Where did this whole spam thing even begin? So picture this. You're in the late 1920s. Okay. The Great Depression is hitting hard. Yeah. And Jay Hormel, who is running his family's meatpacking company. Okay is looking for ways to make meat more affordable. Mm -hmm. You know, he sees those big pricey canned hams in delis. Yeah. And he has a light bulb moment. Oh. Why not create a smaller, ready-to-eat version that everyone could afford? Oh. And bam, Spam enters the scene. Wow, so Spam is like a child of the Depression. That's right. Born out of necessity. Born out of necessity. It makes you think how much of its popularity came from just that need for affordable protein. Absolutely. The Depression played a huge role, but then World War II comes along. <laughs> yeah. And throws another log on the fire. Oh. Suddenly, Spam is being shipped overseas by the millions of pounds. Wow. It becomes a staple for soldiers on the front lines. I can only imagine what a lifesaver that must have been for those soldiers. Literally. Literally, <laughs> yeah. But I also heard some pretty interesting stories about how they use spam for more than just eating. Oh, for sure. Like, have you heard the one about soldiers using spam grease uh -huh. to oil their guns and waterproof their boots? Really? Yeah. That's amazing. Talk about resourcefulness, right? Yeah. It just shows how versatile and how valuable spam became during those challenging times. From keeping soldiers fed to keeping their gear running smoothly, right? Spam was truly pulling double duty. Double duty. That's amazing. It really makes you appreciate how a simple can of meat could have such a profound impact. Profound impact. But let's get into the nitty gritty. Okay. How is this iconic canned meat actually made? The process itself is fascinating, especially the scale of it. Okay. It all starts with fresh pork shoulders and ham arriving at the factory. Okay. We're talking massive quantities here. Okay. Like 8,000 pound batches being ground up. 8,000 pounds at a time? At a time. That's a whole lot of pork. It is. And then what do they just toss it all in a giant can and call it a day? Not quite. Mm -hmm. After the initial grinding, the mixture gets a good chillin' just above freezing. Yep. Just to keep things safe and consistent. Right. Then comes the spice blend, salt, sugar, a touch of water, mm -hmm. and the ingredient that gives Spam its signature pink hue. <laughs> What's that? Sodium nitrate. Hold on, sodium nitrate. Sodium nitrate. That's the stuff that sometimes gets a bad rap, right? It does have its critics. Huh. But remember, back then, it was vital okay. for preventing bacterial growth and giving Spam that famously long shelf life. Okay. In a time before widespread refrigeration, that was a game changer. So it's like a time capsule of flavor? A time capsule. Preserved for generations. Yes. I'm curious, how many people does it actually take to run this whole operation? You might be surprised to hear this, but only 13 workers are needed for the entire production line. Really? From grinding and mixing to canning and cooking. Wow. That's how automated the process is. Only 13 people to make millions of tans of Spam. Millions of cans. That's incredible. All right, walk us through what happens after the mixing stage. Okay. How does all that delicious pork goodness get sealed into those iconic cans? So imagine the blended mixture being pumped into those familiar cans. Yeah. Then they're vacuum sealed to remove any trace of air. Okay. Which helps to create that remarkably long shelf life we talked about. So that's the secret. That's the secret. No air, no spoilage. No spoilage. It's like a culinary fortress built to last. Built to last. But they don't just seal it up cold, right? No. There's got to be some cooking involved. You bet those sealed cans go for a swim in a massive hydrostatic cooker. A swim? A swim. What? Processing tens of thousands of cans every hour. Wow. This not only makes the Spam safe to eat, but also wow. locks in the final flavor and texture. 
from pig to can in a whirlwind of automated precision. That's right. It's amazing how much technology and ingenuity go into creating something that seems so deceptively simple. It's like a well-oiled machine churning out a piece of culinary history with every can. So we know that it's designed to last a long time. Yeah. But just how long are we talking? Well, according to Hormel, if you store it properly, a can of Spam can technically last indefinitely. 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 Stick like some press. But let's be real. The quality might start to dip after about five years past its best buy date. Indefinitely. That's impressive. Yeah. I guess you could say it's the gift that keeps on giving. It is. Even if you might not want to wait decades to open it. You're right. But speaking of gifts, I'm dying to know more about that whole Spam as a luxury gift thing in South Korea. That is a really interesting cultural twist, right? Yeah. To understand it, we need to look at the historical context. Okay. Unlike in Hawaii and Guam, where Spam was introduced during World War II, mm. it appeared in South Korea during the Korean War. Okay. However, its real popularity boom happened afterward during a time of rapid economic growth. Okay. Meat, a symbol of wealth and good living. Yeah became more accessible. So while some cultures associate spam with times of scarcity, South Korea links it to a time of abundance. Exactly as the country prospered, spam became a symbol of that newfound prosperity. Wow. And because it was a readily available and convenient form of mead, it quickly gained popularity. Yeah. Eventually evolving into a highly sought after gift. Really? especially for special occasions like the Lunar New Year. It's amazing how a single product can hold such different meanings across cultures. It is. Reflecting unique historical and economic journeys. It's a powerful reminder that food is never just about what's on your plate. Yeah. It's about the stories, the history, the cultural significance woven into every bite. Okay, so we've covered history production and even touched on cultural significance. Right. But there's one elephant in the room we can't ignore. Uh-oh. -uh. The whole is spam healthy question. Ah, uh, yes, the age-old yes. debate. Yeah. Let's be honest. Spam isn't exactly known for being a health food. No. <laughs> no. It's not exactly what comes to mind when you think clean eating. Right. So lay it on us. What's the nutritional lowdown on this iconic canned meat? Well, you're not wrong to think it's not the healthiest option out there. Okay. It is high in fat and sodium. Mm -hmm. A single serving packs a decent amount of fat and about a third of your daily recommended sodium intake. Oh, wow. But here's the thing. Okay. Hormel actually offers lower fat and lower sodium versions for those who are watching their intake. So there are options for the health conscious spam enthusiast. There are. But what does the FDA say about it? Yeah. Is it safe to eat? They do consider it safe to eat, but as with anything, moderation is key, Okay. especially with processed meats. So not a health halo? Not a health halo. But not a villain. Not a villain. It's all about making informed choices. Yes. And enjoying it as part of a balanced diet. That's right. But let's get back to the fun stuff. <laughs> I'm curious, what does SPAM actually stand for? Oh. Is it some top secret acronym we're about to uncover? That's the million dollar question, isn't it? It is. Hormel has kept the true meaning of the name under wraps all these years. Really? It's become a bit of a culinary mystery, adding to the intrigue. Yeah. Though the most popular theory out there is that it's a blend of spiced and ham. Spiced ham, huh? Spiced ham. It kind of makes sense, but who knows? Maybe it stands for super pig awesome meat. That's a good one. Or something equally as epic. Or something equally as epic. Maybe one day they'll reveal the secret. Maybe. We'll have to just do a whole new deep dive to unpack it. We'll have to. Now that would be an episode for the ages. It would be. But for now, we've got plenty more to explore in the world of spam. Stick with us as we dive deeper into its global reach, yeah. cultural impact, and maybe even try to answer that age-old question, what makes this canned meat so darn enduring? Let's do it. Okay, so we've established that spam has a pretty incredible backstory. Yeah. But what about the stuff inside the can? Yeah, what about it? Let's talk about the ingredients. Okay. People sometimes joke about it being mystery meat, but is it really that mysterious? Not really. Spam is surprisingly straightforward when it comes to ingredients. Okay. You've got pork with ham, okay. salt water, a touch of potato starch sugar, mm -hmm. and of course the famous sodium nitrate. Okay. That's just six ingredients. Six ingredients. Honestly, not, that's less than I expected. It's not that bad. But we were talking about sodium nitrate earlier, yeah. and I know there's some controversy surrounding it. Yeah. What's the real story there? Well, it's important to remember that sodium nitrate has been used to preserve meat for centuries. Okay. It acts as an antimicrobial agent, 
which means it prevents the growth of harmful bacteria. Okay. Like the kind that causes botulism. So in a way, it's a safety measure. Exactly. Without okay. sodium nitrate, spam wouldn't have that incredibly long shelf life. Yeah. Which was crucial back in the day, especially during wartime when refrigeration wasn't always available. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. But I've also heard that nitrates can be linked to some health risks, particularly cancer. Yeah. How do we reconcile those two things? It's a complex issue, and there's still a lot of ongoing research. Okay. Some studies have suggested a possible link between processed meats high in nitrates and an increased risk of certain cancers. Mm -hmm. But it's not a clear-cut cause and effect relationship. So it's more about being aware of the potential risks and making informed choices. Exactly. Rather than writing off sodium nitrate entirely. Right. And remember, Hormel does offer lower sodium versions of spam. Yeah. For those who are concerned about their sodium intake. Okay. Good to know. Yeah. But let's shift gears for a moment and dive back into the cultural significance of spam. Okay. We've talked about how it's perceived differently in places like Hawaii and South Korea. Right. What other examples of cultural variations are out there? Well, let's look at Guam. Okay. You remember how we mentioned that the average person there eats a whopping 16 cans of Spam per year. Yeah, 16 cans. 16 cans. That's a lot of Spam, even for the most devoted fan. It is a lot. So in Guam, Spam isn't just a food. No. It's doubly ingrained in their culture. Very much so. Much like in Hawaii, it was introduced during World War II mm. when food was scarce. Yes. And it became a symbol of survival and resourcefulness. Exactly. So it's almost like a comfort food tied to a shared history. That's right. It evokes memories of wartime resilience and the ingenuity people use to create delicious meals with limited ingredients. Yeah. And that sentiment has been passed down through generations. It's fascinating how a single product can hold such different meanings. It is. And evoke such diverse emotions across cultures. It really speaks to the power of food to connect us to our past, our culture, and even our sense of identity. Yeah. But it's not just about wartime memories. Uh -huh. Spam has also found its way into the hearts and kitchens of people all over the world through its sheer culinary versatility. Okay, I have to admit the thought of Spam extending beyond breakfast and fried rice is a little mind-blowing. I know, right? What other ways have people incorporated it into their cooking? Oh, the possibilities are practically endless. Okay. We've already talked about the iconic Spam musubi in Hawaii. Right. But have you ever heard of Spam fries? The spam fries. Spam fries. Intrigued, but slightly terrified. Okay. Tell me more. Imagine thick-cut Spam okay. coated in a crispy batter and deep-fried to golden perfection. Okay. They're like a savory, meaty version of French mm -hmm. fries. Mm -hmm. And they're surprisingly addictive. Okay, you're starting to win me over with this whole Spam as a versatile ingredient thing. Good. What other culinary creations have you come across? Well, in the Philippines, Spam is a popular addition to adobo. Okay. A traditional dish made with meat, braised in vinegar, soy sauce, garlic, and peppercorns. Okay. And in South Korea, aside from being a prized gift, yeah. it's also used in all sorts of stir-fry soups and stews. It sounds like Spam can really adapt to any flavor profile, like yeah. the chameleon of the culinary world. That's a great way to put it. Yeah. And let's not forget about those who are pushing the boundaries even further with some truly unexpected Spam creations. Okay, hit me with the most unexpected Spam dish you've found. Spam sushi. Spam sushi. Spam sushi. Now that's something I have to see to 